so that we can allow more people to join us. Please go ahead and share the video. Maladosh. We'll praise, Lord. We'll worship your holy name. Malienda Katokuzo so Friday de Gredosh. Please go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it. Our God is good. Thank you, Father. We'll worship your holy name. Mankato Kushko. Please go ahead and share the video. Thank you, Lord. Malienda Balabatoso. So let's just pray in the Holy Ghost to charge up our spirit men. Please go ahead and share the video. Makala dosh. Ere de do bo 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 bo. Mando kush ko prali ala balado sofra de de gredos. We praise Lord. We praise Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Makala dosh. Kali ando bo 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 sofra de de gredos. Please go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it. Our God is good. Thank you, Jesus. It's gonna be an awesome time this morning. Hey, Dodosh, my aunt or so proud of share it, share it. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Hey, Dodosh, hey, so so proud to coach Kaprali ala bala 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 to so proud of the great Dodosh. Thank you, Jesus. Please go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it. Welcome, Happy New Year. Welcome to our year of double promotion. That's the word that the Lord gave us. That's the word that the Lord gave us. And for us to experience all of this double promotion that the Lord has for us, we need to get our faith tuned up. Thank you, Jesus. We need to get our faith tuned up. Thank you, Jesus. Maladosh, Balabados. We need to get our faith tuned up. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Maladosh, Balabados, we we'll praise Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please go ahead and share it. Share the video. Man, so Friday the great Lord of Bush, Campredi Alabalado, so Friday the great Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Man, Katush, Campredi Alabalado. Thank you, Father. We we'll praise you, Lord. Lord, we we'll thank you for this morning. We give a praise. For your word is true. We receive illuminations, directions from your word. We ask that you expand your word in our spirit, man. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Glory to God. 
Welcome to Faith School, everyone. Our God is good. Our God is good. Please go ahead and share the video. Go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it. Thank you, Jesus. All right. This is Faith School. Faith School is where we come to learn about the principles of faith. Thank you, Jesus. I always love this. Glory to God. Why? Because it is through faith that we can we can access what the grace of God already provided for us. It is through faith. I'm telling you. See, the word of God, the word of God says, "Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph." You and I, God has made us to triumph, but it's not just going to happen just like this. There is a force, a spiritual force, that we have to use to draw that victory, to draw that healing, to draw that financial prosperity, to draw that favor. Glory to God. So there is a force. Now, as I said, this is a school. You know, we have looked at different aspects of faith, and we're still going to look at it again because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The fact that we have Thoughts about something doesn't mean that that's the end. You know, we have to keep hearing the word. Now, the principles of faith is very important. We have looked at the why of faith. Why is it that we have to have faith? We have looked at how faith comes. We have looked at what it means to believe with our hearts. I'm just giving you some highlights about what we have done before. Now, you can see all of this video on our Facebook page or also on YouTube. Now, we have also looked at how to release our faith. We have also looked at do not cast away your confidence. Now, so where we are right now is fight the good fight of faith. It is fight the good fight of faith. We need to understand something that um, the enemy doesn't want us to be successful in life. It doesn't. First of all, number one enemy concerning ourselves is it is ourselves. Let me repeat that again. Number one enemy concerning ourselves is it is ourselves. What do I mean? It is us not taking advantage of what God has done for us, not reaching out, you know, ignorance, not reaching out. And ignorance comes when we refuse to reach out to what God has already provided. You see, grace has made available for us everything that we will ever, ever need in life. The Bible says we have been made partakers of the divine inheritance. You and I will be made partakers. But for us to actually experience what Jesus has done for us in his finished work of redemption, we need to understand it. We need to take it by faith. We need to take it by faith. So if we don't reach out, then the devil is not primarily our enemy, you know, in that sense. Or generally, the devil is not primarily our enemy. It is ourselves. If we don't reach out to what God has provided for us. So that is why it is our responsibility your responsibility and my responsibility to do what? To get into God's word and find out what belongs to us and understand the principles of faith and understand it and reach out to it. Now, let me show you the scripture. You're going to see that uh, in life, in life, if what you don't know cannot work for you or what you know and you don't act on cannot work for you, so, you have to know it and act upon it. So, if in the kingdom of God, ignorance is not an excuse. In fact, that's what the devil wants. He wants you to stay ignorant that you are nothing. He wants you to stay ignorant that you don't have anything in Christ. He wants you to stay ignorant that there is, you cannot overcome. He wants you to stay ignorant in that sense. He wants you to be ignorant of your rights and privileges in Christ so that he can keep bombarding you. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. So that he can keep bombarding you. So that he can keep, he can keep what? Tormenting you. He wants you to stay ignorant. He doesn't want you to know that you are his master. He doesn't. He doesn't want you to understand that. He wants you to be afraid of him. Whereas God has made you to be his Lord. God has made you to be his master. The Bible says we have been raised up together with Christ. Not just far, not just above, but far above all principalities, powers, and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but in that which is to come. You know, we have been made to sit together with Christ. That's the place of authority. That is a place of dominion. 
He doesn't want you to know that. He wants you to keep. He wants you to keep uh, thinking that he is your Lord. So ignorance in the kingdom of God, it is not an excuse. The devil thrives on that. All right, look at this scripture. Look at this scripture. Thank you, Jesus. First John, First John four four. Glory to God. First John four four. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Please go ahead and share the video. Look at what the word of God says there. First John 4 4. Thank you, Lord. Maladosh. Cambrede de Gredosh. Kuzoso Frade de Gredosh. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, this is a school. So that is why we're taking it slowly. We're taking actually, sorry, first John 5 4. Actually, let's look at this. This is also great because it doesn't want us to know all of those things. It doesn't. Look at what the word of God says here. He said, ye, you, actually, let's look at uh, King James. He said, ye, or the modern day English language, we say, you are of God, little children, talking about us, and have overcome them, as, and have overcome. Notice, it is not that we're going to overcome, we already, over, we already overcome. It is a done deal, or it is a deal done. He said, and have overcome them. Now, if you notice, the them that is talking about here is talking about oppositions, spirits, the devils, demons. Back up to verse, from verse, uh, verse, verse 2. It's actually from verse 1. He said, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Spirits, notice, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So false prophets, are, a lot of false prophets have been influenced by the devil, by demons. <laughs> I'm telling you. So look at what he says. He says, hereby know ye the spirit of God. So he's trying to tell us how we can separate or how we can know the spirit of God or that which is of God to that which is not of God. Or the things that belong to God, or things that don't belong to God, is telling us how we can overcome that. He said, "Hereby know." Let's go back again. He said, "Hereby know the spirit of God." Hereby know ye the spirit of God. He said, "Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God." That's the way you can test. You know, even even if there is a prophecy in operation, and you are kind of having a witness within you, mm, this is not of God. When you ask, do you, do you that, that, spirit, that spirit in manifestation, do you believe that Jesus Christ come in the flesh? <laughs> if they say no, they are not of God. That's what the word of God says here. That confess it, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. So if he says he's come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that does not, does not, does not, every, or every spirit that confesses not, that Jesus is come in the flesh, it is not of God. See that? And look at what it says. And this is the spirit of what? Of Antichrist. Which, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, already is, is it in the world. Even now, already is it in the world. Now, look at what, what, is it, what it now says right now. To give an assurance to you and I. He said, ye are of God. Or you are of God. Little children. Look at the uh, Bible in basic English. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you are of God, my little children. You are of God. That's the modern day English. You are of God. You are of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at New Living Translation. New Living Translation says, you belong to God. I love that. You belong to God. You see, the devil doesn't want us to know this. So ignorance in the kingdom of God is not an excuse. So you and I, we have to understand what belongs to us. We have to understand what Jesus has made available, available for us. Because it is through the knowledge of all of this that we're going to be able to fight the good fight of faith. Remember what Ephesians says. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Now, if you look at all of those different aspects of the armor of God that he was talking about, everything, it is just all about the word of God. It is just all about the word of God. The mind, everything is all about the word of God. So, Knowledge in the kingdom of God is highly, highly important. Not just knowledge, but we knowing and also acting on the knowledge that we have received. Acting on the knowledge that the Holy Spirit has revealed to us. Very, very important. Let's finish that scripture.
Thank you, Jesus. So the devil doesn't want us to doesn't want us to understand that we belong to God. And what does it mean to belong to God? Which means you are his child, you, you have access to his resources, you have access to his power, that the Holy Spirit lives in you. Look at what he now says. He said, My dear children, you have oh I love this. You have already won victory over those people. What are those people that he's talking about? False prophets, spirit of antichrist, demons, every kind of spirit that is not of God, the devil. You have already won. Notice, he said, you have already won victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in them. He said, because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. And what is the spirit that lives in the world? It is the spirit of Antichrist. It is the spirit of the devil. It is demonic spirits, demonic influences. You have already won victory over them. Notice that. But the devil will rather prefer us not to know that. But thank God. That is why the teaching of God's word, it empowers, it imparts knowledge, it imparts understanding. It causes us to know what we have. And as a result, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we should act on what we know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So look at First John, First John five four. First John five four. What is going to give us this victory is our is our understanding of all of the things that we have in Christ, and it's also going to equip us to fight the good fight of faith. Look at it. First John. First John uh, 5 4. Please go ahead and share the video. Thank you, Jesus. First John 5 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We we'll worship your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Look at what the word of God says here. I love this. I love this. It says, First John 5 4. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at uh, traditional King James. Look at this. He said, but whatsoever is born of God. Woo! Glory to God. I, love, I always love this scripture. Whatsoever is born of God. Remember where we read, he said, you belong to God. You are God. So, before, because you are born of God, because you belong to God, look, notice this. Remember that scripture says, he said, you have already won victory over all of those demons, over all of those spirits of Antichrist, over all of those false prophets. You have already won. You see, our victory... Our victory over the devil, it is a deal done. It is something that is settled. It is something that is absolute. Because Jesus won the victory for us. <laughs> Glory to God. I love that. Our victory over financial lack is already done. Our victory over sickness, it is already done. You know, I love what uh, somebody, uh, what a man of God said. He said, we are the healed one. We are the elder one that the devil is trying to take away our health or our healing because Jesus Christ already did it for us. He gave us the victory. He gave us the victory. So we are already made, we have been healed. We have been made victorious. We have been rich. So we are the rich one that the devil is trying to take away our money. Now, you and I, we have to fight. We're going to get there. Our golden text, fight good fire of it. We have to fight, but in fighting, knowledge, understanding, it is highly, highly important. Knowledge of who we are in Christ, knowledge of what Jesus has done for us, knowledge of who the Father God is for us, or we can put it this way, generally, knowledge of our new creation realities in Christ is highly, highly, highly important. You cannot overcome until you know who you are in Christ. You cannot overcome until you know that you are already healed. You cannot overcome in the area of sickness. You cannot overcome in the area of poverty until you already know that you are the, you are the rich, not the poor. Because the word of God says, for you, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, he said, for you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was a rich, yet for your sake, he became poor. Think about that. Yet for your sake, he became poor. Yet for your sake, he became poor. Why? Because so that you might be rich. So that you might be rich. Notice, he became poor, yet for yourself. So, knowing that, acting upon that, and holding on to that, irrespective of adverse circumstances, irrespective of 
what the word has said and what you are saying on the outside, irrespective, because God cannot lie. The Bible says, the promises of God in Christ, they are yea and amen, which means it is so. They are, they are true and it is so. Amen means so be it. Glory to God. So they are true and it is so. All of God's promises, they are true and it is so. So the devil will want to fight us to what? To cause us to shift our focus. But remember, number one is, number one thing that you and I have to know, have to understand is that God is faithful. That God has made this available for us and we act upon it and we stay upon our words of confession. It will try to shift us away from what we proclaim or what we have professed. Very, very important. Very, very important. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go back to that right now. Thank you, Jesus. First John, First John 4.4. 4. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We we'll praise you, Lord. Look at what it says. I mean, First John 5.4. It says, what, for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the word. <laughs> I love that. You know, when the word of God is talking about the word, it's not just talking about the 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 the, the solid <laughs> world, you know, the three-dimensional world. It's talking about the operations of the world. What makes the world to the world? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? The people, the demonic influences, the systems of the world, things that goes on in the world. Ye have overcome it. He said, well, for whatsoever, I love this. Thank you, Jesus. See, this is one of the things that you and I need to know. First John 4, 4. Also one of the things that you and I need to know. But we're on First John 5, 4 right now. He said, for whatsoever, whatsoever, he said, for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh. Notice, he's, he's not saying that we are going to overcome. He said, overcometh the world. Look at the place that we read before. First John 4, 4. Very, very powerful. Very powerful. First John 4, 4. Look at what it says. He said, but you belong to God. In New Living Translation that we read, you belong to God. And whatsoever is born of God, you belong to God. My dear children, you have already won a victory over this people. The demonic powers, the demonic spirits that are influencing things in the world. Now, something that we need to understand is, the devil is the god of this world. It is not your God if you are in Christ. It is not your God. It is not my God. Glory to God. But just professing that it is not my God, it is not enough. We need to understand it and act upon it and hold on to the words of our confession, which means what we have received, the revelation knowledge of our believer's authority, of our victory over the devil, over the demons, that has been revealed to our spirit now, we need to understand it and act upon it. Where uh, The primary way to act upon it, it is through our words of confession to say, thanks be to God. I am, I am of God and I already won victory over this sickness. I am already victorious because Jesus took my sicknesses, took my diseases by his stripes. Not I am going to be healed, but I am healed. I was already healed by 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by whose stripes? Ye were healed. So if I was healed, I am healed right now. Which is something that has already been done for me. So I am healed right now. So it is already done. So thanks be to God. I am healed. Glory to God. And I keep confessing that. And when, even when the symptoms is raging over me. Because that's not the truth. The truth, it is the word of God. Even when my bank account is showing red all the time. I'm, I'm trying to look for a job. Job is not coming. I get into God's word. I find out what God has said concerning my job. I find out that does God wants me to be successful. I find out. I find it out from the word of God. So I meditate upon it. I begin to proclaim that. I begin to say that even when it seems day one, day two, day three, I don't even know where job is going to come. But my trust is in the word of God, not in in the environment, not what I am seeing on the outside. Because I believe His word. I know that His word is the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Very important. Very, very important. We need to understand that. But the devil doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to what? 
take what is going on on the outside and begin to proclaim it. Say, oh, well, I don't, I don't think I'm going to ever find a job. I don't think I can ever come out of, out of I don't think I can ever come out of this financial difficulties. <clears throat> I don't think I can ever succeed in life. I don't think I can ever make it. I don't think there is a way for me. I don't think I can ever be married. He wants us to be taking what we are seeing or what we are already experiencing and keep saying it. Why? Because you understand the, the law of faith. You believe it and you say it, you will have it. Now, it is not just believing things that is right that is going to come to pass. If you believe things that are wrong and you are saying it, it's going to come to pass. <laughs> Glory to God. A lot of us don't realize that. The law of faith works in, in forward motion. It also works in, refi, in, re, in reverse, or which means words. What you say, you're going to become. What's reproduced after itself. The enemy understands that. So he wants you to keep saying, I cannot make it. He wants you to keep saying, there is no way I can ever be out of this financial debt. And the truth of the matter is, it is a lie. Why? It is a lie. Because the word of God says, for with God, all things are possible. The word of God says, and my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Think about that. The word of God says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. The word of God says, and my God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. You see that? And we are back to every good word. The word of God says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I, lack, I love the translation. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack no good thing. Think about that. So, the devil will want us to not be saying that, but to be saying something different. But you and I, we have to fight the good fight of faith, knowing that we already won the victory over lack, over, uh, over sickness, over uh, not having job, whatever it is that is not of God. Everything that is negative, that is of evil, they are not from God. Glory to God. But the devil doesn't want us to understand that. But it is the responsibility of you and I to find out what belongs to us, what belongs to us in Christ, meditate upon it, let the revelation of it be done upon our spirit now, and begin to confess it. Say, this is who I am in Christ. This is what I have in Christ. It is the responsibility of you and I. And we hold on and depend upon the Holy Spirit to help us, to strengthen us. Glory to God. Very, very important. Let's, let's finish that. Thank you, Jesus. That was John 4, 4. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. It says, for, for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh, I love this. I just, I just always love this. Overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. In what? I love this. Even our faith. Even our faith. Our trust in God's word. Our absolute dependence upon God's word. Our absolute dependence upon God's word. Our reliance, total reliance upon God's word. Taking hold of God's word and begin to declare it. That's what is going to cause us to overcome. That's what is going to cause us to overcome. All right. So look at First Peter, First Peter six. I mean First Peter six twelve. I mean, so first Timothy 6:12. Very, very important. So you need to understand that the enemy is going to fight you at every inch of your faith journey. <laughs> you know, a lot of people will just say, What? What are you talking about? Does it mean that I'm not going to have any relief? No, you will. What is going to give you relief is the faith. <laughs> you remember what we just read? He said, This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Your faith. And my faith, which means our total trust on God's word will give us the rest. The Bible says, they that have believed, they, they that have believed have entered into his rest. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love that. They that believe have entered into his rest. But you need to understand that you are in a fight or you are in a war. The earlier you start, the, the earlier you realize this. Then you're going to find out that you're not going to sit down and be complaining that, Lord, why is this happening to me? Lord, why me? Why me? Why me? You are in a fight. You are in a war. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I'm not saying that to scare you, but I'm just letting you understand. But the thing about it, look at this. 
the fight that we are in, it is a good fight. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. He said, fight. I love this. Fight the good. <laughs> I love this. Fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. You see, in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, it is those that are aggressive. It is those that understand who they are in Christ and lay hold on, on, lay hold on it. It is those that are like bulldog that always win. Remember, for us to win in life, you have to understand who you are in Christ. We're going to get into all of this. You have to understand because the fight, the good fight of faith. Notice that fight the good fight of faith. You have to understand the principles of faith. And that's why we're having this faith school. Because it's helping us to understand, I mean, it's helping us to understand faith principles. So part of, part of faith principles, it is you understanding that you have to, notice, you have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to. Because oppositions will come. You remember um, the parable of the sower? When Jesus talked about the parable of the sower, he said there were those that received the word. Now, persecutions, tribulations come for the word's sake. For the word's sake. Persecutions, tribulations, they came for the word's sake. Because the devil understands that the victory or what is going to give us victory in life, it is what? It is the word of God. He understands that. So he's going to try and persuade us or to try to shift our focus of the world. Remember, in the la in last time, you know, that my wife and I did, we looked at in, we looked at Ada and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Despite the instruction that God gave Adam and passed on to Eve, what happened? The devil came to try to twist the word. What Jesus, what God already told them. He came, he came to Eve. He said, as God not said, God already said. You see, the devil doesn't have power over us as believers. But one of his weapons is powers of suggestions. One of his weapons is to try to cause us to doubt the word. We are believers. We already believe the word quite okay. But it will bring a situation or thoughts to our mind that will want us to doubt the word. One of it is it can fight against us receiving that healing, against us receiving that financial miracles, so that it can it can do it so that it keeps lingering. Maybe one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, you have been confessing God's word that you are the stripes, by strength you are healed. Or that my God supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You have been saying that. And it, don't, it, it seems that things are even getting worse. You see? He will try that. So he's bringing those afflictions, those persecutions, so that you will not get to the point, ah, maybe this doesn't even work. Let me look for alternative. That's what he wants us to do. You see, the devil cannot just come and take the word of God from us. If you, if you study that parable, the, the parable of the soul, he said, for those that the word could not work in them because they lack understanding, not understanding needs. So that is why understanding the principles of God's word, the workings of the word of God, and how to take hold and never to quit, standing on the truth, irrespective, and to depend upon the Holy Spirit that is in us, it is highly, highly important. Very, very important. Very, very important. Because if we refuse to do that, then we have lost the battle. Period. Thank you, Jesus. We have lost the battle. Look at the word of God here. Thank you, Lord. He said, fight the good fight of faith. So the fight is a good fight. <laughs> I love that. What does it mean it's a good fight? Which means it is a fight that you cannot lose if you lay hold, if you stay on on God's word. It is a fight you cannot lose Fight the good fight of faith. Now, there is something else that we need to understand. Our fighting, we are not fighting from a defeatist position. We are fighting from a position of authority. A position of authority, which means we are already 
victorious. You remember where we read. He said, you belong to God. You already won the victory. First John 4, 4, New Living Translation. You are you already you are you already won or you're already victorious. See that? So we are already victorious, but the enemy is trying to take our victory from us. So we are not fighting without any weapons. We are not fighting without any any backings of heavens. We do. But you have to take your stand. You have to declare what God has done for you. You have to declare who you are in Christ. You have to declare that you have been healed, not going to. You have to declare that my God supplies all of my needs. So fighting the good fight of faith, it is you laying hold onto what belongs to you in Christ and you refuse to let it go. I'm telling you, glory to God. You see, unfortunately, a lot of us believers, we want somebody to do the fight for us every time. Somebody to pray for us every time. Now, please don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong in somebody praying for us. Please don't get me wrong at all. There's nothing wrong. But if for, for us to be effective in our Christian journey, you have to be the primary custodian of your Christian journey. You know, if you come to me, if I pray for you, if you don't have the substance in you, if you don't understand the principles of faith, even if I pray for you, you, you can have a temporary relief, but for you to have a permanent victory, you need to understand who you are in Christ. You need to understand what belongs to you in Christ. It's just, it's just, it's, it's, it, that's just it. Well, somebody say, why that? And that is why a lot of us, we are not experiencing victory, a continuous victory or a perpetual victory. We are not. Why? Because we want the pastor to pray for us today. We want the pastor to pray for us tomorrow. Every now and then, we just go and we just, we, we just, we are like paying people. You know, there are people that all they just do is Pay this pastor, give it to this pastor, give it to that pastor, give it to this pastor. And uh, some of them, the primary reason is so that they will be praying for them, they will be praying for them, they will be praying for them. So they just want to be doing everything. It doesn't, it's, it's not going to be working perpetually that way. Because God will expect you to rise up. And that is why when situation comes, they are finding out ah, there was a time things used to work, things, things used to work. How come it's not working again? Because God already sees your heart that you are paying those pastors. You are doing all of those in order to what? To be getting them to pray for you. You don't want to take responsibility for your life. And not doing that, <laughs> then you go to a point that things are not working the way they used to. Because you just got born again, you think it's going to be, be like that? No. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. The one that has been declared righteous, that has been made righteous, shall live by faith. So it is your responsibility to find out what belongs to you. It is your responsibility to what? To say, no, victory is mine. You say, victory is mine. It is your responsibility to fight the good fight of faith. Glory to God. Because people just, just want that. They want something quick. They don't want to do the study. Find out what belongs to them. And I'm sorry, it's not going to keep working that way. Because God has given us his word, the Bible. Has given us his why his word, the Bible. He wants us to know him through his word. So if you don't do that, then you're gonna find out that you're gonna you you're not gonna like the you're not gonna like the lifestyle that that's gonna be coming up. You're not gonna like like the life that is gonna be coming to you. Why? Because you haven't understood that you are a faith fighter. <laughs> that you need to do the fighting. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what the word of God says. Let's finish on this. Thank you, Lord. All right, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Remember where we are fighting from is the position of authority. He said, lay hold. Lay hold. Oh, I love that. Lay hold. Why is it that the word of God is telling us to lay hold? Because something or someone is trying to get it away from us. Something or someone is trying to get away our healing. Something or someone is trying to get our victory over every area of our lives. Somebody, you see, one thing that I love about God is He always wants us ahead. He always wants us ahead. He always wants us ahead. Why? Because He sees ahead. He already knows. And God's word it is, it is complete in the word of God. The Bible it is complete. Because in it we will find out what belongs to us. In it we will see what is going to come. That's, it's, it's so powerful. 
and he has given us the Holy Spirit that lives in us so that we can understand, so that we can know. So it is the responsibility of you and I to get it in, get into the world and begin to see what we have, to understand us. But unfortunately, some of us will not. But he said, lay hold, lay hold, because the enemy is going to try to what? To take what belongs to us. Lay hold on eternal life. You know, the life that we have in Christ, because Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So the devil is going to try to steal that from you because the devil is the killer, is the stealer. It is a destroyer. He will try. You see, the devil don't have power over believers, but there is a way that it can influence believers to get off the word of God and get into the arena of unbelief, doubts, and begin to speak negative. So as a result, now we have we now the believer has given him permission over his life. Permission over his life. So the devil cannot just come and just say he wants to destroy you if you are if you are maintaining your standing, God. You know, as a believer, because you have been made victorious, he cannot just come that whoa, okay, I'm going to kill you. No. But if one of the ways that he also does that is through fear. What he's trying to do is try to shift your focus from the word of God. But when you understand, the Bible says, I haven't done all to stand. Stand there, stand therefore. When you understand your position of authority in Christ and you stand on it, then the devil cannot kill you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The devil cannot kill you. Or somebody might say, well, I know of a believer that he died or he or she died in an accident or she died of this, she died of that, maybe cancer. I mean, it saddens my heart. But I don't know. I don't have a perfect knowledge of what happens to him or her. I don't. But this I know is God is true to his word. He said himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses on the cross. By his stripes were healed. He said he will give his angel to keep charge over us. That's the word of God. What God has spoken. Our ever living father that he has spoken. Can God lie? No, he cannot lie. See, we're going to look at all of this. What is going to help us to fight the good fight of faith? Understand who we are in Christ. Understand the faithfulness of God. Understand that God cannot lie. Understanding the name of Jesus. Understanding who we are in Christ. That we are the righteousness of God in Christ, in Christ Jesus. All of this is going to equip us because those are mighty revelations. The Bible says for the weapons of our warfare are not kind of our weapons. And the great thing is we have great weapons in Christ to fight the good fight of faith. So I don't have a perfect knowledge of everything that happens to that person. I don't know, but this I know, that God is faithful. This I know, that what he has spoken, it is the truth. Glory to God. Thank you so much for joining this faith school. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, every time in our faith school this way, we don't always see many people. Glory to God. But one thing that we've understood is that God wants us to have the knowledge of his word. So we're going to keep teaching it. And one thing that we have understood is the gift of the Spirit is not always a manifestation. But thank God for the Word of God that we can always act on any time and at every time. Glory to God. So we're going to keep teaching it. So please listen to this over and over again and share the video. Let it be a blessing to someone because God already made you victorious one. But for the victory to be made manifest on the outside, you have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to lay hold on the eternal life. You have to lay hold on eternal life. Actually, let's finish reading that. Glory to God. You have to lay hold on eternal life. Look at, look at uh, for, uh, 1 Peter 6, 12 that we were reading. Is that fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. <laughs> I love that. So which means what you have professed or what you have confessed you should lay hold on to it. The Bible says, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Which has great recompense of reward. For he is faithful that has promised. <laughs> Glory to God. Cast not therefore your confidence. So he wants us to lay hold our confidence or our confidence in the word of God or our confession. What you have confessed. If you have confessed that my God shall supply all of my needs. The word of God says, don't cast it away. Lay hold on to it. Be bold about it. Be bold. Why? Because you are not declaring that based on your own ability, but you are declaring that based on the ability of God. 
Glory to God. Based on the word of God, and God is faithful, who also will fulfill it. But if you stay hold, if you stay put on God's word, on the principles of faith, you will overcome. You will overcome. Because the Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So find out from God's word, whatever you are going through. Find out from God's word, what the word of God has said about it. So don't just keep talking. Find out from the word. If you need job, find out from the word, what does God, what, what does God word say about me finding a job? Find out from God's word. If you are facing sickness or disease, what does the word say? If you, if you are in fear of flying, find out from God's word. If money is not coming to you, find out from God's word and meditate upon that and begin to declare it. Act on the word. Hold on to the confession of your faith in the word of God. The word of God says, fight the good fight of faith. You are the one to do the fight and there is not God that is going to do the fight for you. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Please share the video and let it be a blessing to someone. Father, we thank you. We give you praise because your word is true. We thank you for you will expand this, your word in our spirit man. We thank you because you want us to be victorious because you already made us victorious once. We thank you for your, your for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit is in us. He will continually strengthen us, energize us to keep laying hold onto what belongs to us and not to let it go because it is in doing that that we're going to be experiencing victory in every area of our lives. And we we'll thank you for the precious promises in which you have made us to be partakers of. We we'll thank you, Father. We give a praise. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please go ahead and share the video and let it be a blessing to someone. Glory to God. Tomorrow is our healing school. Remember the word that the Lord gave to us this year is our year of double promotion. And February, I mean, January 6, 7, 8, we're going to have our world explosion. Glory to God. We usually have it at the beginning of every year. And the theme for this world explosion is living by faith. Glory to God. Because faith is the victory. If you're going to add victory this year, 2020, in every area of your life, you need to dig more into principles of faith. You do not have a choice if you want to express victory. Because the victory... I mean, what gives us victory over the world? It is our faith, our trust. Understand the principles of faith. That is why we cannot overemphasize faith. Glory to God. We cannot. Because that's what, well, that's what is going to give us victory. Glory to God. So, that is why we are talking about that living by faith. It is our lifestyle. It is the realm that God has provided for us. You, so, you need to know that. So, uh, January 6, 7, 8, 10 a.m. Glory Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be live on Facebook. We're also going to upload it on YouTube. Remember, remember, you have been made victorious. Remember, you have, you have been made victorious over that sickness, over that cancer, over that lack. You are happy. Why? Because God's word is your assurance, is your backing. So, lay hold on to that and begin to say, I am a victorious one. And begin to say, I am victorious in Christ. Begin to say, I am the healed of the Lord. Begin to say, my deeds shall supply according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Begin to say that because your word carries power as, so, as, soon as, as long as they are based on the word of God. And I see you victorious in life. In Jesus' name. Please go ahead and share the video. Hallelujah. Go ahead and share the video. And until tomorrow, for our faith for healing, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, remember that Jesus is Lord and is coming very, very soon. Shalom. Be blessed. Amen.